Hello guys, it's me Glef back again and Decca has just released a blog post talking about the near future for Realm and I just thought that we could take a look on it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Sorry for the lack of videos lately. I've been doing a lot of stuff in real life, but hopefully I will get back into making more videos soon. But don't forget to join the 4000 gold giveaway, like the video and subscribe to the channel and let's jump right into the news coming June 7th. So this will be released in about two weeks and Decca says, Realmers, the date is closing in on us and we wanted to give you a preview of what's next for Realm. We have been showing you some features during the opening testing sessions and there will be one starting tomorrow on 27th of May. But this is the first time we put it all together. So these are the uh, key points here. We have Realm Speed Up, UT Trading Extension, 3rd Generation Craftable STs, Horror Story Campaign, Solo Keys, Bleeding proje Projectiles, Forge Changes, Void Event and more. We want to make some quality of life changes to the Realm spawning system, both reducing the time spent in the Realm and also making it more meaningful by having more interesting events. So I'm looking greatly forward to this and let's see what they've done about this. Ghost King will be tweaked so it, ha it has less waiting time and idle phases. I love that. Ghost King will no longer be an evolution boss. There will be only one wave of five enemies and they will spawn immediately upon attacking the Ghost King. Ghosts and the Ghost Master no longer have invulnerability while they move around. Ghost Master can be tossed in any of the five directions, not just the right of the Ghost King. Lovely idea, uh, I've been preaching for this for a long time and I'm happy Decca has realized that this is a problem. Less Entations and fewer Liches will spawn. This effectively means a decrease in the number of her heroes of orcs per realm. Ents and Liches have been reduced by 50% on average, resulting in a 33% decrease in heroes of orcs overall. Drop rates have been increased to adjust for this reduction. Lovely idea. Ents and liches are too many at the start of the realm, and I'm loving. Uh, I love seeing this coming to a change. Event bosses for high-level dungeons have an increased chance to spawn. Some once per realm events to be decided can now appear more than once. Event bosses have a 25% chance to appear after a hero of orcs is killed. Lord of the Lost Langs, Sphinx, Hermit, Mountain Temple encounters can now appear up to two times per realm. That's amazing. Slight adjustments to some event encounters. Avatar, max HP is reduced uh, a little bit. Killer pillar defense uh, reduced from 70 to 60. I think that's defense. Nest, behemoth max HP reduced from 25 to 20k. And the nest colonies are reduced as well. UT trading extension. We are increasing the list of UTs which can be traded in order to not dramatically alter the appeal and design of dungeons, encounters and quests. We are being very selective when opening the trading option for these items. This is the list of the new items that will now be tradable. Uh, that's the Prot Tom, Ring of Pyramid, Nile, uh, Ferris Requiem, Ancient Stone Sword, Crystal Sword, Crystal Wand and two Wakasashis. That's not bad at all. I love seeing more UTs being tradable and it's actually working pretty uh, well in the game. New STs. The new generation of STs come with a completely new system. Instead of being directly dropped from monsters, they can only be obtained through the item forge. Generational icons. We would like also to introduce an icon in the STs tooltip that allows you to identify to which generation of STs they belong, with certain exceptions. Reskins and reworked items generally respect the generation their originals appeared in. So here we have new distinction uh, for uh, what generation ST sets are from. And here we have the resurrected Huntress set, we have the Bolt Thrower, um, we have the Wedding Dress, we have the Lightning Rod, and we have the Gothic Buffant. Um, yeah, I will hopefully take a future look, a specific video about each of the new ST sets. Uh, but they says this about the Huntress ST set. Items of the set, we just looked at them. And here we have the Kill Billy Warrior set. Uh, we, here we have the Jagged Hatchet. Overalls of Endurance, 40 HP, I like that. 
Burlap Cowl, we have the Headless Ted, and it uh, seems like you're getting a lot of attack and HP and defense with this set. The Kill Billy is also able to get in close and deal a lot of damage. Is Burlap Cowl synergizes with the Headless Ted, ring item to paralyze enemies who might otherwise run out of his range. In addition to uh, the usual Berserk effect on Helms, those enemies who do escape will be left bleeding due to improved bleeding system on his jagged hatchet weapon. So we have the weapons there. And here we have the ST crafting that you will be able to do in the item forge with this update. Um, in the new ST tab, more details further below, you can find a new generation of ST sets items that can be crafted. Um, you can only craft uh, the new generation of SD items um, but they're looking into that in the future um, I'm not sure if I like this it's going to be interesting but I'm not all that hyped about new SD sets in the game because we have that many items in the game already mythical material SD items require the new mythical material to be crafted this material can only be obtained from the dismantling ST items so that's interesting and that gives a use to worthless ST items that you ha have more of. So that's nice, I guess. Mythical set tokens. Finally, ST items also require a specific token obtainable from a variety of dungeons. Every ST set requires a different token. So to craft the items in the new Huntress ST set, you will need the Huntress unique token. Uh, these token will in phase three drop in selected dungeons. Okay, that's uh, weird, but I guess I don't know. Yeah. I do not at all like these story campaigns with the new ST sets. I just hate ST sets overall. I don't think it's a good system in the game. It was interesting in the beginning, beginning, but now we've just gotten too many and I'm not sure if I like this at all. But uh, yeah, let's take a further look on solo keys. Running solo dungeons is a popular and dangerous challenge for our veteran players. Why not having extra re rewards for it? Solo keys, as the name suggests, are keys for players who want to play a dungeon alone. These keys can only be opened in your vault and cannot be re-rolled, upgraded or downgraded. Solo keys are a great additional way for you to get mythical ST gems. They can be found in easy daily quest, free packs and limited per week in the shop. These keys uh, will be present during phases one and two. Right now you can experience these keys for the following dungeons, Lost Halls, Secluded Thicket, Crystal Cavern, and High Tech Terror. So this is how they look, and boss has a 5% chance of dropping a Generation 3 set token. That's not even that good. What? Are they... Okay, 10%. But that's so bad. 10%. If you, 5% to get... One of the uh, set tokens you need to craft an item with. And I don't know if I like this at all. I don't know. This is weird. Phase 2 from uh, June 21st to July 11th. We will start selling the augmented keys. These are very similar to enchanted keys. But will drop tokens and ST shards as one of the drops instead of STs directly. We will be selling these keys for the event running at the time. Augmented keys. Using using an augmented key will open the respective dungeon and give the opener a mythical ST crate. Here you can get a mythical ST gem, shard, chest, mystery ST chest, and mystery ST shards, golden clover, lucky clover, blue drop potion. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't understand what these faces are. It's so, so weird. Well, I'll happily leave that messy ST update and let's look on the improved bleeding effect an update to the combat mechanics has allowed for the bleeding condition to be reworked attacks or abilities with the bleeding effect will place a bleeding stack on the affected enemy which will last for x seconds this stack will deal up to 20 damage per second until it expires though some weapon add extra damage per second these stacks are cumulative and can be added by multiple players on the same target for balance reasons high level enemies have a bleeding cap so they cannot lose more than 1% of their total max HP per second through bleeding. Forge UI changes. 
We have improved the interface of the blacksmith menu. There are now different tabs that make navigating your crafting options easier. You have all, you have UT, ST and miscellaneous. I like that change. We've also added a sorting function that will arrange the current tab in order of forge fire cost. I like that as well. Special requirements. Okay, this this is um this is something I'm worried about because I like the forge right now, but let's take a look on what the special requirements is. Certain UTs now require you to dismantle one or more UTs from the same dungeon set of dungeons as part of the cost. This will be clearly indicated in the forge requirements. Fungal cavern and crystal cavern items can be used interchangeably. Lost halt, cultist, hideout and void items can be used interchangeably. Some items can require additional marks of their specific dungeon. You can now see the valid items as they have icons that appear in their tooltip to easily identify them. For now, the only items that you have icons are top tier items and that have a characteristic dungeon they are found in. So not all items have this icon. So here it requires one item from Fungal Cavern or the Crystal Cavern and I'm looking forward to seeing what Shatter's items are. It will be a mess, I think. To make it easier to identify which items for fulfill these special requirements, items that are needed will be highlighted with a sign border. Okay. For now, we are applying this system only to top level dungeons and crafting top tier items. We will observe the impact of on the game and mind change and or extend it based on feedback. As mentioned, not all items have associated dungeon. You can check the list below. So here are the different ones. We have, we have Fungal, Crystal Cavern, Nest, Lost Halls, Cultist Hideout, The Void, Forgotten King, and Orcs Sanctuary. Blueprints. Blueprints will all now also count as an original item from the dungeon its item com comes from, uh, which is amazing. I think this means you can use a blueprint as a substitute for one item from its corresponding dungeon. Remember, not all blueprints have an origin dungeon. We will be applying this change to blueprints of top end items only. Also, maximum of one blueprint per forging is still maintained. So this is a great change because before getting multiple blueprints was not that good. It reduced a little bit of forge, forge fire, but I think this is better. Um, uh, change and I like it though. I don't like the specific items because I think some items will be harder to craft Lastly, we have a void event starting June 7th and uh, Will end on June 21st at the same time the void will give you 1.5 uh, Times the loot and XP like uh, usual in these events plus a guaranteed draw drop of the void catalyst times two in the realm, you will find the Void Heralds, who have allied with the Void Entity, alongside them with Remnant of the Void portals will spawn. Remnant of the Void is the same Void you know and love, but with a twist. Since it's just a Remnant, it's weaker than the real thing, so it always spawns with the following dungeon modifiers. Weak boss 3, tame boss 4, 5, uh, no, 4, yeah that's 4. Weak um, minions 3, tame minions 3. So it will be much easier uh, overall and will give you one void catalyst. And there will be Ice Cave, Ocean Trash event, third dimension, Pyrocyte Chambers also during this time. And here are the quests which you turn in five, 50 void catalyst. You get a void bo bow and it's once per account and will last through the whole event like all these. And you have the void blue, void bow blueprint and then um, uh, some skins and some pet skins. So I, li I like that event, but I'm not sure if I like this overall thing. Like the realm speed up is amazing. I love it. UT trading is extension, always great. Third generation craftable SDs, not sure. Horror story campaign, not sure. Solo keys, I guess, but it's just a grab for the SDs. And the four changes, are pretty nice but i don't like it because i like the way it is right now but it's a little bit overpowered i can see that but what do you guys think of this comment down below and uh, yeah that was this video just me reading all these things but um, yeah what do you think comment below i'll see you guys later in another video bye bye